Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here. Okay, so recently id Software released the long-awaited Doom patch that introduces support for the Vulkan API. Now this is essentially OpenGL's answer to DX12, offering many of the same advantages and it's evolved from AMD's work on Mantle, which laid the foundations for many of the features seen in the latest generation of graphics APIs. Now we've got a big bunch of AMD and Nvidia GPUs we wanted to test here, but there's a problem Problem. Our video analyses are put together using FCAT. Now, what's that you might ask? Well, check this out. It's a coloured border overlay on the left there that marks up every single frame output by the GPU. Now, from our perspective, it is the preferred way of benchmarking because measurements are based entirely on the frames output by your system. No internal metrics are used here at all. Effectively, what you see is what you get. FCAT injectors are available for OpenGL, DX11 and DX12, but unfortunately not for Vulkan, meaning we have to stick with its own overlay metrics here. It's not ideal to be honest, but it can give us a basic view of performance increases. So here's our approach. What you're seeing here is a very quick run through of a section of the first level in Doom. We pause at three locations and then we carry on with a short repeatable piece of gameplay. At the end of this run, after we chainsaw a demon here, we pause the capture and check out the average CPU metric seen here. This gives us a look at CPU time across the run and generally speaking the lower it is the better. Now we'd love to use that GPU metric as well, it would be really useful, but unfortunately under OpenGL it's broken on AMD cards as you can see here. Kind of weird huh? So let's take a look at the settings we're using for our tests here. Basically, we're at 1440p resolution and we are running our ultra settings. First up, we're going to look at a quartet of the most powerful GPUs around, GTX 1080, 1070, 980 Ti and Fury X. And then to get an idea of scalability on AMD's new Polaris technology, we've added RX 480 in its 8 gig configuration. In all cases, we're pairing them with an overclocked i7 6700K running at 4.6 GHz, along with 16 gigs of 3000 MHz DDR4. OK, so let's start at the beginning of our save game here. A very simple scene here. Under OpenGL, we see three tiers of performance. GTX 1080 is by far and away the fastest, followed by the very similar 1070 and 980 Ti. Then Fury X and finally RX 480, which is last in the pack by quite a margin. Factor in Vulkan and the 1080's dominance isn't really challenged. It's about 9% faster than its OpenGL showing, but the Fury X gains a massive 32%, effectively putting it on par with the 1070 and 980 Ti. The RX 480 is a slower, cheaper card of course, but it still posts a highly creditable 24% boost. Now what's interesting here are the percentage gains. They're very rough owing to the way we measured them, basically noting the lowest frame rates reported on screen. But what's clear is that Nvidia's gains are fairly small, while AMD's are much, much larger. Now onto our second spot, which sees much lower frame rates compared to the first, perhaps owing to the transparency and distortion effects here. The contest under OpenGL shows the Fury X moving closer to the 1070 and 980 Ti this time, and as we factor in the Vulkan scores, Nvidia's gains are limited to just 5-6%, to while Fury X gains around 39%, while 480 scores increase by 27%. And in the final scene, what we do here is measure the lowest frame rate during the red barrel explosion sequence. Now what's interesting here is that we can assume that the action here will involve much more CPU, calculating the physics from the blast. It adds a certain level of unpredictability to a split second capture of action, and that may explain the widely variable improvements we see on the Nvidia side. But this is where we see the biggest boost for AMD yet, a colossal 51% increase for Fury X, and a still substantial 36% percent boost for the RX 480. Of course, split-second comparisons can only give a really rough indication of performance increases, and owing to Doom's highly random nature, averages over time are also somewhat dodgy, but our limited slice of very similar gameplay throws up some interesting metrics on CPU utilisation. Now this is an average of CPU time measured in milliseconds, so the lower it is, the better, and that's really important for AMD in particular, where its older drivers are known to have a significantly higher overhead than Nvidia's. So what's the score here? CPU time drops by 6.5% on GTX 1080, 7.5% on 1070 and 9.8% on the 980 Ti. It can still only be considered a ballpark indicator, but once again, AMD is showing the biggest reductions in CPU time here. 
At the end of the day, what we have here are a bunch of very raw metrics that can only give us a very basic overview of what Vulcan brings to the table. But the data suggests that AMD's older drivers are somewhat lacklustre, but Vulcan brings it back into the game. And the Fury X in particular is fascinating. It lags behind the top-end GPUs from Nvidia substantially under the older OpenGL API, but it seems to be faster than 1070 and 980 Ti under Vulcan. And finally, how about some metrics for the RX 480 versus its max well NVIDIA competitors, the 980 and the 970. Now we really would love to give you some GTX 1060 comparisons too, but that'll have to wait for now. But what you see here is the RX 480 lagging behind GTX 970 a touch in OpenGL, but with Vulkan it's actually offering ballpark GTX 980 performance when both cards are using the newer API. Okay, so fingers crossed that it will update Doom with a console command to invoke that FCAT border where we can really go into depth on what Vulcan offers, but in the meantime, I hope this very basic look at what the API brings to the table has been worthwhile. Please do like and subscribe for more Digital Foundry, and I'll see you next time.